Okay, today I'm going to do another video on Orbiter 2010, and I'm actually redoing this video. I already made this video once, uploaded it to YouTube, and wasn't happy with the way it turned out, so I'm redoing it. This is going to be a flight from the Earth, excuse me, from the Moon back to the Earth, and I'm going to use Transex. Before I load up Orbiter, I want to mention that if you want to follow along, you'll need to go into Modules and check the checkbox next to Transex. And also, I'm going to make use of the external MFD, and you'll see why I'm going to use that. So if you want to follow along, check the checkbox next to this uh, EXT MFD. I'm going to go into Scenarios, scroll down here a little bit, go to the Delta Glider folder, and I'm going to use the Brighton Beach Scenario. This scenario comes with Orbiter 2010, so uh, you'll have the same exact scenario that I'm using. So I'm going to select that scenario and hit Launch Orbiter. While this is loading, I'll mention that uh, this method that I'm going to use for going from the Moon back to the Earth, I learned by watching a video by Fly Tandem, and I just want to mention that because he's been extremely helpful to me over the last uh, you know six months or so. Every time I've got a question about Transex, I send him a message on Orbiter for him and he answers right away, so he's been fantastic help. So, uh, just wanted to make that mention there. Once Orbiter is loaded, here we go. I'm going to, uh, just briefly take a look around. You can use the mouse, you know, scroll around and see where we're at. Here we are, you know, Brighton Beach, and, uh, the sun is shining, so we're gonna try to get back to Earth here. Tap F1 to step into the flight deck. Now I'm going to press F8 so I can get over to this 2D cockpit view. I just prefer this view for some reason. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of that external MFD. And the way I do that, you have a couple of options. You can press F4 and then come down here and click on Custom and then go to External MFD or you can just press Control F4 and that'll take you straight into custom functions. Once I have that up, I'm going to select External MFD and click OK. And the reason that I want to use this MFD is because I can ex uh, expand it like this. For the most part, that usually doesn't help anything, but I'll show you why this matters with uh, Transex and specifically with this flight from going from the moon back to the earth. So I'm going to select here, you know, press SEL, then I'm going to bring up Transex. Um, hopefully you have some familiarity with Transex. This is what it looks like by default. We are on the moon, so this gray circle represents the moon itself, and this represents, this number here, is the distance from the center of the moon out to the surface is 1,738 kilometers. Uh, you know, if you're not familiar with this information, it's kind of interesting to note that if you uh, bring up Orbit MFD, let me just show you this real quick. If you kind of compare the way Transex looks by default with Orbit MFD, then you can kind of see how there's quite a few similarities here. Uh, here, we you know, we have the radius 1,738 meters from the uh, center out to the surface and so on. So this just kind of gives you something to something to compare with. Now, the first thing we need to do for setting up this journey to go from the moon back to the Earth is over here where it says select target planet moons. We need to click this button over here which will toggle between escape and none and this this goes forward this goes backwards and if you just click them continuously they go in a loop so that's something to note if you're not familiar with the way transex works that's how it works whenever you want to change a variable or excuse me well when you want to make a change to the setting of a variable you do that over here and when you want to go through the variables themselves you click over here to go through the different variables the only variable that we need to work with at the moment is this select target planets moons and we want to just change it from its default setting of none over to escape so that's basically what we're doing 
And if we needed to make any adjustments here, we could do that, but we don't need to make any adjustments. But this works the same way. ADJ goes forward through the adjustments and minus AJ goes backwards. So that's kind of how transx works. You know, this variable goes forward, forward, forward. This one goes backwards. This one goes forward. This one goes backwards. This one goes forward. This one goes backwards and so on. So we'll come over here again, the default setting, which what is planets, moons. We changed that to escape. Now I'm going to press forward. Notice that that took me from stage one of one out to stage two. When I pressed forward, it actually created this stage because this stage didn't exist before. If I click back, you'll notice that it now says stage one of two, whereas before it only said, said stage one of one. So just by pressing forward, I actually created this stage. <clears throat> now let me explain quickly what we are looking at here. This information is showing us the orbit of the moon around the Earth. This gray circle here in the center is the Earth itself. And this blue circle, this very large blue circle, is roughly the orbit of the moon around the Earth. So you can see it's, you know, it's quite large. Um, and this is the direction that the moon will orbit. And this blue line is actually pointing to where the moon is at relative to its position at the Earth. You know, if we sat here and waited, uh, you know, seven days, it would go roughly a quarter. And if we waited 14 days, it would be on the other side, because that's, you know, the moon orbits about every 28 days. So this is the orbit of the moon around the Earth. I just think it's really important to understand what you're looking at at each of these different stages. So right away, we have a somewhat of an understanding of why using external MFD is useful in this situation. Let me show what this stage looks like if we just use the regular <clears throat> if we just use the regular uh, transx MFD as you can see here in the smaller version. And here is what we have. It obviously looks as the same, but what we don't have in the smaller one, at least you can't see it very well, is if you look here, and you might not be able to see this because by the time it uploads, <clears throat> you know, when it gets compressed in video, it's a little tough to see, but you should be able to see this on your own system. There's actually a small blue ring that goes around this gray circle that represents the Earth. It's very, very small. <clears throat> in, in the smaller MFD, you probably don't even see it because it blends in with the gray, so you don't even notice it's there. But if we use the external MFD and stretch it out very large, you can actually see that there's this small blue ring around the gray circle. Now this is important to note because that blue ring around the gray circle basically represents the part of the uh, Earth's upper atmosphere you know, where you would be basically be in trouble, so to speak, if you were to get inside of that blue ring, you would be getting a lot of atmospheric drag. So we kind of need to know where that's at. And Transx doesn't give us an actual number. So as we're trying to adjust our, uh, you know, negative prograde velocity here in a moment to figure out where we need to be when we get back to Earth, we don't have anything to go by other than that visualization. And let me just jump right into that and show you what I mean. So now that we're over here in the stage two of two view setup, I'm going to need to press VW to go to eject plan. This brings up a new set of variables. Okay, again, let me just show you. I pressed VW to go from setup to eject plan. And again, if I just press VW, it'll go back and forth between the two. Now we have several variables here. We have prograde velocity. We have the eject date, uh, outward velocity, change of plane. And then if we click it again, we're back to prograde. So again, these just go in a circle by pressing VAR. Now, well, the first thing we need to do is in order to get back to Earth, we basically need to leave the moon and slow down. Because when, we, when we're, it, we're in orbit around the Earth, 
And if we just hover up off the moon, you know, we'll continue obviously to orbit the moon. But we basically need to slow down in order to get back to Earth. So instead of adding positive prograde velocity, which obviously that makes our orbit even larger, you can see, you know, we would be not only not getting back to Earth, but we would actually be making our orbit around the Earth much larger. So that's not what we want. We actually want to go negative with the prograde velocity. And you can see what's happening here. This yellow dashed line represents our orbit. This is our, you know, hypothetical orbit. This is kind of a what-if scenario. And this orbit shows that we are getting closer into the Earth as we continue to add negative prograde velocity. Now you can see here, if you're looking at this MFD over here, you might think, well, <clears throat> negative 800, that looks like it has me really close into the Earth. So you might think that that would be a sufficient amount of negative prograde velocity. And, you know, technically, uh, you would actually get back to the Earth if you went with this amount of negative prograde velocity, but you would be, you would have an orbital altitude at the Earth that would be very far out in uh, space, relatively speaking. You'd be, you know, probably 3,000, 4,000, maybe even 5,000 kilometers above the surface of the planet. And if we're wanting to get back to Earth and actually land, that's not really that acceptable. We need to be in closer. So again, if we're looking at this MFD, you can't really see how close in you need to get because of the, the data, uh, or rather the visualization is just too small. And there's no number. It doesn't tell you that, okay, well, your closest approach to Earth is going to be 5,000 kilometers. If it did, then we could just go by this. But since it doesn't give us that information, we kind of need to eyeball it. That's why I'm using the external MFD. Now that I've got this down to negative uh, 800, this was the course setting. And if I continue to add, uh, or if I continue to take away negative prograde velocity using course, it's going to have me, obviously, at this point, I'm impacting the Earth. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm in too far. I need to go up a little bit. And I need a finer adjustment. This course setting is just too... It's making too large of a change at once. So if I click ADJ, that'll change this from coarse to medium. And that will give me a, that will allow me to make smaller uh, adjustments. So I'm gonna press uh, minus minus and continue to bring this down a little bit. Now that I'm at negative 821, again, by looking at this version of TransX, you you know, you can't really tell where you're at, so we're just going to focus on this one. I need to go ADJ to go to a finer setting to make this adjustment even, uh, you know, even a smaller increment. So you can see here as I'm subtracting away the uh, negative prograde velocity, as I'm looking at this dashed yellow line as it starts to get real close into this blue circle that, rep, that wraps around the gray circle, you got to wonder, you know, how close in do you need it to be? I The only way that I've been able to figure this out <clears throat> is obviously just through a little bit of trial and error since there's no number here. So I actually made four flights prior to uh, this video, and I will show you an image that I made that I think will help explain this better. So using negative 824 uh, prograde velocity, this is what I come up with. And if you look here, I zoomed this in to hopefully, so you can see it more clearly on the video. You can see this dashed yellow line, how it comes in, and it's just missing the blue ring uh, around the Earth. It's not touching it at all. When I made this flight, I found that my closest approach at Earth without making any kind of mid-course correction was 2,280 kilometers. That's still pretty far up. We need to be, we would prefer to be in closer than that. So I made a second flight and I went all the way down to negative 851 uh, prograde velocity. When I made that flight, without making any mid course corrections, my uh, periapsis back at Earth was positive 370 kilometers. That's actually pretty good. And if you look at how this one worked out, the dashed yellow line was just 
this one piece of the dashed yellow line was starting to just touch that upper part of the blue. And that gave me this uh, final orbital altitude. When I made the third flight, I brought it down to 853, which, you know, that's just an additional two, uh, two amounts of delta V. And the dashed yellow line was now starting to actually uh, touch and overlay that blue ring. And when I did that, then my periapsis back at Earth was, uh, without making any mid-course corrections, was 230 kilometers. And the fourth and final flight, just to find out where the lower limit was, went from 853 to negative 857. And this brought my uh, periapsis all the way down to uh, negative 40 kilometers, which obviously is a crash course with the Earth, and it would not be a uh, workable flight without making some kind of mid-course correction. Now, I do have to mention, obviously, hopefully this is obvious, that this particular number, negative 824, 851, and so on, this is all relative to where the moon is actually at in its orbit around the Earth. The moon is not always at the same distance. Therefore, this actual number is going to change depending on the time of the month uh, that you do your flight. But what you can still use as a reference is this dashed yellow line, how close it's getting to that blue. And, you know, I kind of, I'm probably over-emphasizing this point, but if you don't have anything else to go on, <clears throat> you know, what are you going to use? Since there's no closest approach, there's no uh, periapsis, it doesn't give you any data to, to know, so the only way to figure this out was through trial and error. So this, in my opinion, is one of the solutions that you want to use, either this one or this one. That's basically where the dashed yellow line is just barely starting to touch that blue ring. Now, I'll mention again that all four of these would work. It would just be the case that you would require a different amount of mid-course correction. In this case, where our periapsis was positive 2,280 kilometers, once we got in here close to the Earth, we could simply do a very tiny inward burn, and that would bring this down from 2,280 kilometers to something more like uh, 300 kilometers, which would probably be something like we would want. I think that point is should be understood, so I'm going to move on. Now I'm going to decide how much negative prograde velocity I want to use, going based on the information I just gave you. Um, I'm just going to sit here and eyeball it for a second, so bear with me. I'm bringing it down, and you won't be able to see this on the video, I know. It'll be... Uh, it'll be too pixelated, or you won't be able to see it as clearly, even if you're looking at full screen. But I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And to me, based on what I can see here in front of my computer, something around here looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go with negative uh, 851.5. To me, that looks like the dashed yellow line is just starting to overlay that blue ring that I talked about and it's not getting too far inside. So this is the solution that I'm going to go with. Just one moment. And once I have this, I can actually close out this large external MFD. I don't need it anymore. So the next thing I need to do is to actually um, go to stage one of two and there are some different things that I need to set up here. The first one is in the view setup. Make sure you're in view setup and if, again if you click view you'll go over to escape plan. If you click view again you'll go to maneuver. Click view again you'll be at setup. So that's how you get to setup. You need to go through these variables and again if I just continue to click VAR it'll, it'll go around in a circle. So just hit VAR until you see graph projection ecliptic. And if you miss it, just keep clicking it and you'll get back to it. And again, the way we adjust these variables is by using plus plus or minus minus. So I'm going to change the ecliptic to plan. And these uh, work the same way. If I miss it, I just keep clicking plus plus and it'll get to plan. Once I have that part set, I'm done with view setup. 
Now I press BW to get to Escape Plan. Here, this data is kind of showing me my uh, hypothetical uh, plan for getting back to the Earth, but I have some adjustments to make. But th let me just explain that this dashed yellow line up here off the surface of the planet is currently at 2,086 kilometers above the, uh, actually it's above from the radius of the Earth, of the, of the Moon out to here. Now the radius from the center of the Moon out to the surface is 1,738 kilometers from the center to the surface. So if I take this number and subtract it from that number, that tells me what my uh, periapsis distance is going to be, which is basically the orbital altitude, and this comes out to be something like 300 kilometers. That's way too high. I definitely don't need it to be anywhere even close to that. All I really want for an orbital altitude around the moon is 20 or 30 kilometers. So all I need to do to figure out how high or what I need my PE distance to be is I'm just going to add 20 to this number, 1,738. That gives me uh, 1,758. So I'm going to change the PE distance here to 1,000, or I guess just say 1.758. Uh, and I'm going to change that course to medium using ADJ to get down to a less uh, uh, sensitive adjustment. And I'm just going to continue to hit minus. Now I'm getting pretty close. So I'm going to hit ADJ one more time and click minus minus a few times until I have that down to 1.758. So that's going to be a target altitude of 20 kilometers. See the math there is pretty simple. Now you need to remember this number, um, although I'll show you how to get back to it if you uh, lose your place in Transex, but make note that you're, make note of whatever this number is. Next thing I'm going to do is click VAR to get over to the eject orientation. Now the eject orientation is the direction that I'm going to, I'm going to lift off the moon and I'm going to fly out in a uh, in some specific direction so that I can get in orbit around the moon and head off you know to the Earth and the eject orientation is basically what direction am I going to face when I lift up off the moon and fly out am I going to be you know heading 90 degrees which would be straight east uh, am I going to be heading uh, you know 45 degrees what what direction am I going to go I need to figure that out and I use this eject orientation to figure it out. This green line here is actually the orbit of our vessel around the moon. Once we got into orbit around the moon, this green line would actually be a circle, you know, like it normally is when you're in orbit. Right now it's a straight line because we're sitting here, we're not moving, um, so that's why it just appears as a, as a solid straight line. But this, to figure out the eject orientation, I need to get this solid green line extended so that it comes all the way out to the surface. And I can do that by clicking either pl uh, minus minus or plus plus. And you can see as I'm holding it down that uh, green line's reaching out to the surface. It's starting to touch it right about here. And I need to actually overlay this white line uh, straight over top of that green line while it's you know stretched out to the surface. And I can do that just by continuing to press plus plus you can see it's kind of starting to move around and as I do that my heading here is changing and now that that's getting close I'm going to press ADJ and press plus plus to get a less uh, sensitive setting there and I just want to hold, keep doing this until that line is straight over top of the green <clears throat> and it's and at this point it is and this shows me that my heading would be 65.32 degrees so in other words I would lift up off the uh, off the landing pad here. I would rotate to the uh, left or you know counterclockwise until my heading was here. So I'm almost, if I wanted to use this plan, I'm almost facing the right direction. I would only need to lift up, rotate a couple degrees to the left, and head out that way. That is one option, and it's a good option. Let me explain why it's just an option though, and we don't have to use this. 
this is the eject point. This is the point where we're going to uh, light up our engines, so to speak, and do a, a fairly large prograde burn and head off to the Earth. That dashed yellow line represents our plan, our hypothetical plan for getting back to Earth. So that means if I lift off here, this is where I'm at, and I get into orbit around the moon, I've got to go all the way around until I'm back at this point, and then I can uh, <clears throat> uh, do the ejection burn and go out. If there were an atmosphere on the moon that I had to concern myself with, then this might actually be my only option, because you wouldn't want to uh, be fighting the atmosphere. But there is no atmosphere to speak of on the moon, so I can actually go the other way if I want. And let me show you what that would look like. <clears throat> if I continue to press minus minus, let me uh, do that here for a moment. You can see the green line is coming all the way around, going out the other side, and now it's reaching out to the surface, touching it right about there. And if I continue to press minus minus, that white line will swing around and until it's lined up right at this point. Let me see if I can just get any kind of a finer lineup. Uh, to me, that looks pretty well lined up right there. This one is the same idea. We're going to get up off the moon, come around to this point, do the ejection burn, head off to Earth. So that part doesn't change. The only thing that changes is that we have less time in the orbit around the moon. We only got a quarter, roughly a quarter, of a distance to go around the moon. What would be happening here is that we would lift up, lift up off the moon, off the landing pad, and our heading would be 245 degrees. That's basically uh, almost exactly the other direction. So we would lift off, rotate, so that the nose is facing currently where the uh, engine thrusters are, and we would leave the moon basically that way. And whichever way you go, it doesn't actually matter. There, the only advantage to this method is that uh, you have less time between the time that you lift off and the time that you get to the ejection point. But with time acceleration, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. So if you wanted to, you could go out the other way. And that would perhaps have the advantage of just giving you more time in orbit around the moon so that if you wanted to make uh, you know, different adjustments and such, then you could do that. I've done it both ways, and it doesn't make a bit of difference to me. So I'm just going to go out this way because it's a little bit shorter. I've talked a whole long time, and hopefully I haven't bored you to death, but I just, I, I like to cover as much as I possibly can, and I just, after reviewing the last video, I really felt like it was lacking in a lot of ways. So I might be going in the wrong direction in this video and just over explaining. But we are done. We are done setting up our MFDs. We have the amount of negative prograde velocity figured out. We looked at that in the external MFD, so we know that this dashed yellow line is where it needs to be. We've come over here to uh, the view setup, and we've got this set up to plan. We've gone through this stuff, and we've set up um, our PE distance, and we've gone through the eject orientation, and we've got that set up. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just, because I've already got this part figured out, I'm going to hit a minus VR to have this come up just as a reminder. This just will serve as a reminder as I'm getting up into orbit around the moon as to what my PE distance should be. A couple things to note. Number one, this heading is important. Uh, do not forget what this heading is, because as soon as you lift off the, the moon, off the landing pad, this number is going to go away and it's going to be replaced with relative inclination. So if you forget this number and you lift off, then you basically are going to have to start over, because uh, there's no way to retrieve this number once you lift off. So remember this number, 200 and what, you know whatever it is in your case, but in my case it's 245.3. I'm just going to basically say it's 245 degrees. As I'm getting ready to lift off here, I'm going to bring up Orbit MFD, press PRJ to change the projection to the ship, and I'm also going to change the frame to equatorial, just out of habit. 
So I am ready to go. Let me uh, do this here. Make sure I've got rotation on. Rotation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift off, rotate around, and just get into orbit and uh, head out. So let's go ahead and do this. Pressing zero, 0 a few times on the numeric pad to lift up. G to raise the landing gear. Press L just to level out there. Make sure that we don't drift. And take a quick peek at the external view just to see what's going on. Looks like everything's coming along pretty well. So we'll jump back in the flight deck. And I basically have to turn 180 degrees so it doesn't really matter which way I go. So I'm just going to rotate this way. Take a peek here at the external view. See what's happening. And we're coming up on 245. Looks like I'm going to overshoot there a little bit. That's inefficient. About 245 coming up right there. And we wanted just a little bit more because it was 245.3. So we'll go with that. Now I'm going to press uh, plus on the numeric keypad, control to lock it down, tap the L key to turn off the uh, level autopilot, pitch up to about 8 degrees or so, and now I'm going to press and hold the period key to turn off the hover engines. Take a look at the external view. I love this stuff, order is so cool. Alright, now what I'm keeping an eye on here the relative inclination, and I also need to kind of watch what's going on with my orbit. So I might be a little quiet here for a moment. I want to make sure I do this right. Start to pitch down here a little bit. There, my decision for pitching down is kind of based on this time to apoapsis. As I can see, it's climbing, um, which is fine, but I don't want to be pitched up too aggressively or else I'll have a really steep orbit and I want a nice circular orbit. Keeping an eye on the relative inclination, as long as it's going down, I'm fine. If I notice that it starts to go up, then I can use a Control 1 or Control 3 on the numeric keypad. Those are yaw adjustments. And I use Control just so I can get really small amounts of yaw adjustment. I don't want to make any aggressive adjustments. And my uh, time to apoapsis is still uh, climbing slowly. That's fine. Maybe uh, go ahead and start to level out here a little bit because I'm not too far away from orbital velocity, keeping an eye on the relative inclination, it's still coming down really slow. Uh, once I get to about uh, 15, when you're 1.5, then I'll start to maybe back off the engines a little bit, keeping an eye on the relative inclination, watching the time to apoapsis. It's really starting to climb now, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch all the way down to make sure I'm level with the horizon. And remember the target here is 1.758, so what I'm going to watch here is for when this APR gets close to that. Go ahead and start backing off the main engines because things just climb really fast. And you can see the APR is going up. And getting pretty close. 1.758. There it is. It matches with what we have over here. Uh, relative inclination was, I believe, continuing to uh, go down the whole time, but now I can tap H to bring the HUD over to orbit moon. Press the prograde button to uh, switch over to prograde. And there's a couple things I want to look at here. The time to do the ejection burn is in 1,725 seconds. That's the dis that's the time from this point to that point. My time to apoapsis is 2,620 seconds away. That's the time from this point to this point. If it were necessary to um, raise my uh, periapsis, then I would need to do that at this point here. And I'm not going to have to do that, though, because I'm going to reach the ejection point before I get to apoapsis. If I had gone out this way, then I would reach apoapsis long before I would reach the ejection point and therefore I would definitely have to make a small burn at apoapsis in order to bring up 
the periapsis because you can see the periapsis here is only uh, you know 2.4 kilometers it's not high enough we need to be up closer to the target which is 1.758 but <clears throat> in this flight since we're going around the short way we don't have to worry about that I may have an opportunity to uh, work with this relative inclination and let me find out if I have that opportunity or not I'm going to press select I'm going to bring up uh, the align plane MFD and to go back to earth uh, doing this method I don't want to you know reference and target I don't want to use those I've already referenced the moon which is fine I want to press this ELS which uh, allows me to input the ecliptic inclination and the longitude of the ascending node of course I don't know what that information is but it is given to me by Transex that's this number here the inclination which is 131.8 space and then it also wants the longitude of the ascending node and that's given to me right here so I press in 100.9 hit enter and this tells me that uh, I'm going to be coming up on the ascending node here in about 340 seconds that is long before I'm going to reach the uh, point where I need to do the ejection burn so that means I will have an opportunity to bring my relative inclination lower that's good so I'm going to go ahead and do that um, and that's one of the reasons also why you may choose to go out the longer way that way it's guaranteed that you'll reach apoapsis first and you'll also reach one of the nodes before you get to the ejection point that way you'll have an opportunity uh, to um, you know make any corrections that you need to make before doing the ejection fortunately I'm coming up on the ascending node before reaching the ejection point so I'm gonna have the opportunity to do it so I'm gonna fast forward here to get closer to the time to node this uh, that's this number here it's counting down and basically when this number is one second that's gonna be when I'm going to do this burn but just before getting to this point I'm going to uh, make an orientation change to my vessel since I'm coming up on the ascending node I'm going to go to the anti-normal position that can be uh, easily remembered by a n equals a n that's how I think about it ascending node equals anti-normal a n equals a n ascending node equals anti-normal <clears throat> and obviously if it was the other one then it would be you know positive instead of negative but I'm coming up on a n so getting close enough now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the anti-normal position because it'll take a few seconds for the ship to settle so there it is it's now settled <clears throat> press T just to get in closer to this point this is not gonna be a large burn so I definitely don't want to go you know press pop the plus key on the numeric pad and hold it I'm just gonna use control plus to do an incremental burn and this is just gonna be a very small amount you can see I've only got you know 0 0.30 so we're coming up and we're doing the burn now see that number is coming down 19 18 17 and so on and there's zero if I need to do any uh, translations I can but it looks like I stopped it at exactly the right time and you can see over here the relative inclination came down to uh, zero point now it says zero one five oh two which is pretty close to zero point zero zero okay now I'm gonna switch over switch back to prograde just to get into the orientation that's gonna be needed for the ejection burn which is coming up here in 1100 seconds uh, I'm done with the line plane so now I can bring back the orbit MFD and I'm gonna make sure I shut off all the autopilots and now I'm gonna press T to accelerate time to get out to the ejection point and a little while before just maybe a hundred seconds or so before I get there I'll come out of uh, time accelerations and then reorient the vessel so we're getting pretty close here that's close enough let me press prograde and get reoriented We're going to begin the burn in about a minute. Let me just uh, 
press T one time to get closer. And there we are, 10 seconds. <clears throat> and this is what I'm looking at, in case I didn't mention it, the begin burn. Two, one, zero, burning. <clears throat> now the amount of time that I need to burn is dictated by this number here, the delta V. I need to burn until delta V is zero. You can actually press T, speed this up a little bit. And once I get uh, about out to there, go back to normal and maybe start slowing things down a little bit to make sure I don't overshoot. And 40, 30, 20, let me slow down a little more. And there we are almost at zero. Okay, now I'll leave this last little tiny bit to the translation thrusters to uh, make sure I don't overshoot. Now that I'm down to this very small amount, I'm going to press control and go with an even finer amount of thrust. And that is basically zero right there. Now there is one other thing I can do here before I uh, accelerate off to the earth. I could just leave it as is and go, it would be fine. But I can turn off prograde, leave myself oriented the way I'm oriented. And you'll notice that if you look in real close, and you might not be able to see this on the video due to uh, compression and pixelation, but on your own uh, TransX session you should be able to see that your green line, which represents your actual orbital path, maybe slightly off of the dashed yellow line, which the dashed yellow line was our was our plan. That's where we want to be going. Since I'm a little bit off, what I can do is use the lateral thrusters, which is uh, number one or number three on the numeric keypad. And it tells me how far I'm off here. The semi-major difference is 0 0.65. If I tap one, I can see that's bringing that down. So I can just press one and hold it and you can see that's coming down and I just continue to hold this until that won't go any lower. As I'm doing that, you'll notice on yours, you, again, probably won't be able to see this in the video, but the green line is starting to slowly overlap that yellow line. So in other words, our actual orbit path, that, which is the green line, is getting closer to the plan. It's getting closer to what we want. Uh, so we're just off by a little bit and we're just moving it to get closer to what we want. And you notice, you probably notice also as I'm doing this, the delta V is starting to show a negative number. I can press control 9 and just tap it a couple times. That's a very small amount of reverse thrust and that will bring that back to basically zero. And then I can go and resume my uh, semi-major difference burn. And there again, I press control 9 to bring that up a little bit. This is being very, very precise, by the way. You don't really need to be this precise. Uh, we can definitely correct a lot of this with the mid-course correction. But why not take care of it out here? <clears throat> so I'm just continuing to fine-tune this uh, semi-major difference. Control 9 a couple times to fix that delta V. And the uh, semi-major difference is really getting very low at this point, so it's actually going to start counting up if I continue to burn. But I'm going to just continue to tap 1 until it won't go any lower. Control 9 to fix that delta V. Down to 0 0.09 on the uh, semi-major. And now you can see it's actually starting to count up, so let me tap Control 3 a couple times. There we are. Control 9 wants to uh, fix the delta V, and that's as, that's as perfect as that's going to get. It's not going to get any better than that. So let's take a look at what we have. We have the relative inclination that is very low. We have a delta V that's very low. And we have a semi-major difference that's very low. So our actual orbit to go back to Earth is extremely close to the plan. So if our plan was good, then our actual path back to Earth should be good at this point. Okay, now let's uh, just take a quick peek at the external camera. We are still here in, you know, behind the moon or whatever, and we've got uh, quite a ways to go to get back to Earth, so let's just do some time acceleration. The, there's a few, there's a few points to look for to know when to kind of stop 
accelerating time. And the first one is going to be when this escape plan changes from, uh, it will come out of stage one, or, or rather the, well, the, the escape plan will go away. Let's just put it that way. And that's going to happen when the moon's gravity, according to Orbit MFD, is basically 0 0.03, roughly. It might be 0 0.02 or 0 0.04, but basically when it gets to about 0 0.03, this information is going to change. So that's one thing we can look forward to. Um, let's just go ahead and accelerate time to get to that point. 10,000, you can see this is coming down rapidly. And now we'll go down to 1,000 here in a second. And continue at 10,000 for a moment. 0 0.06, 5, 4. In just any second now, we should see this update from what it is now to a different, to a different view. And I'll explain why I'm mentioning that here. There we are, 0 0.03, so just any moment now this is going to change. Still at a thousand time acceleration. And there we are. So let me back down to 1x. And let's take a look at what we have. Uh, we're done with uh, the orbit MFD for the moon. So we don't need this anymore. What I like to do at this point is click reference and bring up the Earth. We're also done with using uh, the PER and APR measurements. So we can actually click DST to bring up the uh, distance measurements in above the surface, which is more uh, more convenient. But let's let's look at what we what we have at this point. According to Transex, our periapsis, well, first of all, let's address where we are in space. We left the moon here. And, you know, the moon's been moving for a few hours, so it's out here. We're at this point, and we've still got to travel all the way along this path to get back to Earth. So we've still got quite a ways to go. According to Orbit MFD, the gravitational influence of the Earth is 0 0.35. So we're getting a pretty good tug now from the Earth, but we've still got a ways to go before it'll be the dominant influence. Currently, the dominant gravitational influence is the Sun. But let's... Uh, understand what's happening or understand what data we have. According to Transex, our periapsis back at Earth is going to be 5,440 kilometers above the um, center of the Earth. And the center of the Earth, or the surface of the Earth, is 6,371 kilometers from the center out to the surface. So according, according to Transex, at this point, we're actually on a crash course with the Earth. And that actually coincides with what uh, Orbit MFD has to say our periapsis is going to be. As a matter of fact, these two MFDs use the same math model, so they are always going to agree exactly. According to uh, Orbit MFD, with the reference of the Earth, our periapsis back at Earth is going to be negative 930 kilometers. And that's, uh, you know, that's not what we want. But the fact of the matter is, this is wrong, and so is Transex. And the reason it's wrong is because the these MFDs use a two-body math model. And if you want to Google search two-body orbit calculation, you can read about what that means. But basically, um, in a nutshell, what it means is that Transex and Orbit MFD are basing this number, the periapsis back at Earth, on a model that would say the Earth is the center of the universe and our ship, our vessel, our delta glider is the only vessel in the universe. So it's a two-body system. It's the vessel and the Earth. And that doesn't work when trying to calculate the periapsis back at Earth when coming away from the Moon because the Moon and the Earth are actually, you know, tugging on each other uh, or at least the, or the, or the Moon is tugging on the Earth ever so slightly you know, fairly significantly, actually. So the center um, of the, the center of gravitational mass is not the center of the Earth, actually. It's somewhere, you know, maybe out here or somewhere else. It's whatever it is, it's not the center of the Earth. Therefore, this number cannot be relied on at this point. Now, the main reason I mention that is so that we don't 
attempt to make any mid-course corrections based on this number because it just wouldn't do us any good. So the question becomes, well, either what do we base our decision on for making the mid-course correction or when do we do the mid-course correction? And I'll answer the latter part of that question as the when. Because we're, if we just want to use transacts, we, I think it's fair to say we don't have enough information at this point to make a, a, a good decision on a mid-course correction. So instead of doing a mid-course correction now, we'll just do it later. In, in my experience, the best time to do, or a good time to do the mid-course correction for getting back to Earth is when the gravitational influence of Earth is about 0 0.80 or higher. So 0 0.80 or 0 0.85, something like that. Once you're that close to the Earth, the math model that these MFDs use is accurate enough. It still will be off by a tiny bit, but it will be accurate enough that we can do the mid-course correction at that point without being terribly far off. In, in short, like just explaining here, if I were to change the periapsis back at Earth from what it currently says is negative, you know, 900 and let's just call it negative 920 kilometers, if I were to raise that all the way up to what I want, which is like, say, 200 kilometers, by the time I got back to Earth, this would be way off. So it just doesn't do any good to make that correction now. I'm assuming that I explained that well enough. Take a quick peek at the external camera just to kind of see where we are. There's the moon, and the Earth should be around here somewhere. Sometimes I lose track of where it is. There it is. Or actually, I guess that's the moon. Whatever. We'll go ahead and accelerate time now to get to that point that I was talking about, which is uh, 0 0.80 or thereabout. So here we go. And you'll notice as I'm getting closer to the Earth, this number is coming up. So again, if I had made a large correction a few minutes ago, this would just be getting further and further off by the moment. And this is ex agrees with TransX. So again, warp ahead. I guess I'll actually stop warping ahead when the Earth becomes the major gravitational body. And that'll happen here when the, this reaches about 0 0.51. Oh, there we are. So let's take a look. Now the Earth is the major gravitational body, and this the orbit HUD has been updated. So, and we can already see that according to Transex and according to uh, Orbit MFD, our periapsis back at Earth, it now says it's going to be 152 kilometers. That's getting, that's pretty good. I mean, that's getting much closer to what we need. So let me just press prograde here just to get oriented in the uh, direction of Earth. Now that we're in the vicinity of Earth, these autopilots orient us uh, correctly. Now, uh, if I were to, if I wanted to make the mid-course correction now, <clears throat> technically uh, I could, but again, it would be, it would be off. Um, it would it wouldn't be nearly as far off as it was when I was back at 0 0.35 but it would still be off by enough that I don't think it's worthwhile to do at this point so uh, but I just wanted to pause for a moment and show the difference between where we were and where we are now so let's go ahead and warp time ahead to uh, that 0 0.8 figure I know we shot there a little bit, but that's okay. We're still still basically where we want. Okay. All right, let's uh, take a look here. So now we're not too far away from the Earth. We are 36, let's call it 37,000 seconds away from our closest approach at Earth. According to TransX and according to Orbit MFD, our uh, periapsis back at Earth is going to be 310 kilometers. And as I continue to move uh, forward closer to the Earth, this is going to continue to climb ever so slightly. But this is very accurate at this point within, uh, I would say, within uh, 10 kilometers. I, w I would guess that if I didn't do anything at this point, by the time I got back to Earth, this would be about 320 kilometers. That's actually perfectly acceptable. 
no need to even do a mid-course correction if we don't want to. But just for the sake of uh, explaining how this works in case your periapsis, periapsis is way off, let's go ahead and do a mid-course correction at this point. Over here in Transex, um, and I guess could actually briefly mention if you, uh, if you, if you understand the inward and outward burn concept, you can actually just do these. You could actually do this burn without going through Transex just by using a lateral. Let me just show you what that would look like here for a moment. As I'm now facing prograde, um, if I press and I turn off prograde, but I'm facing that way, if I use the numeric keypad 1 and 3, um, if I want to do a little bit of an inward burn, I can tap 1, and you can see that's bringing the periapsis down. Say I wanted it uh, 300. Just control 1, now I've got it exactly 300. I just did basically a little bit of an inward burn, and let me show you what that looks like from the ship's perspective. It'll be these thrusters firing out that way, which is moving the ship this way. So that's 1, 1, 1. It's pushing the vessel this way, that's inward. And that's bringing the periapsis down. If I needed to go the other way, I could use 3. That's firing the thrusters out this side, which is pushing the vessel this way, that's outward. And that will bring the periapsis up. So if I had, say, a negative periapsis, which was uh, you know, 50 kilometers below the surface, I could use those lateral thrusters, or I could even rotate the vessel minus 90 degrees or plus 90 degrees and use the main engines. But let's use Transex for this purpose. Over here, we'll press VW to get over to View Maneuver. And uh, first thing we got to do is press plus plus to turn maneuver mode on. Now I can go through the variables, and again, just by pressing VAR, it'll cycle through them. And again, what I want to do here is either an inward burn or an outward burn. I don't want to change the prograde velocity. There's just no need to do that. And uh, I, I also don't need to worry. I'm not going to worry about the date. When you, As soon as you turn maneuver mode on, the date locks in at what it was at that moment. So technically, this burn is going to be a few seconds late, but that's OK, because we're far enough away that it won't make a difference. So what do I want my uh, orbital altitude at Earth to be? You know, I'll, i got to decide that. I like 200 kilometers. It's a nice round number. And I'm not planning on doing any complex atmospheric braking. So let's go with 200 kilometers. This is the, uh, the 6.371. That's 6,371 kilometers. That measurement, again, is from the center of the Earth out to the surface. So I want to go 200 kilometers above the surface. So 371 plus 200 is 571. So if I, I want my focus periapsis to be 6.571. So I need to do a bit of inward burn. And in an inward is negative outward. And this is going to be small. So I'm going to bring the adjustment down to super and go with that. And you can see here the hypothetical periapsis. This tells me what it will be if I do this burn. And again, I want to bring this all the way down to 6.571. There, I'm coming up on 6.571. Do an adjustment. There it is. Now, also, since I'm still a little ways out, this is not going to be exactly, uh, it's not, the periapsis isn't going to be exactly 200 kilometers when I get back to Earth. It'll be really close, though, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. So let's uh, press VW to get over to this view. Turn on the rotation thrusters. And I need to line this X up with the center here. And I know to do that, I just uh, since this is going to be an inward burn, I just need to rotate to the left negative 90 degrees, and that'll have that X lined up with the center. And if I didn't know that, then I could just press a button and rotate until the X started to move and then figure it out that way. So we're getting pretty close here. Okay, there we are. We're centered. Let's uh, get it exactly centered, as close as we can. Okay, and now we will use just a control plus, just a tiny amount of main engine, because you can see 
We're only bringing this up by less than five delta V, so this is going to be a very small burn. Recording uh, once that burn's done, compress VW, VW to get over to maneuver, press VAR to go through the variables until it uh, comes up to maneuver mode, press plus plus to turn maneuver mode off, and according to Transex now, our periapsis back at Earth will be 6,571 kilometers from the center of the Earth, which again that's the 200 kilometer figure that we wanted, and that agrees with orbit MFD over here. So press prograde to go back facing forward. And we're basically really close to done here. As I move forward, I just want to mention again, this is going to change ever so slightly. But I'm guessing at this point, you know, by the time I get into uh, the periapsis at Earth, this shouldn't be more than like 210 kilometers or 215 kilometers. It's very, very close at this point. If we wanted to, let's say we were going to do atmospheric braking and we really needed it to be very precise, what we could do is warp time ahead until we got to say 0 0.90 or 0 0.93, something like that. And then we could just see where we stand. Let's do that. 0. Point, uh, let's go with 93 because that'll be just 10 further ahead. Okay, let's go with that. Go back to the prograde just to see where we're at. Okay, now you can see we uh, our periapsis is raised by 4.4 kilometers. So again, if I were going to be doing atmospheric braking at Earth where every kilometer matters, then I would I could go ahead and lower this uh, back down to 200 kilometers. I could go through the maneuver mode, but it's not necessary. What we can do is just press prograde, and once the ship is settled, uh, turn that off, maybe kill rotation, and then again just using uh, lateral translation, pressing 1, that will bring that back down to 200 even. And again, this won't hold all the way to the to the earth but as we get closer to the earth this becomes increasingly more accurate so again if i were going to be doing atmospheric braking where i needed this to be exactly you know 58 kilometers or whatever then i could continue to bump forward you know three four uh, let's call them gravitational points for lack of a better term i could bump forward three or four at a time and just continually make those lateral adjustments as needed but we are uh, we're not going to be doing atmospheric braking, so we're not concerned if this is exactly an even number or not. The last thing I'm going to do is to set up the deceleration burn. And once we've done the deceleration burn, then I'll consider this uh, new video complete. We can do this a couple of ways. We could just uh, forget about Transex and say, okay, we're done and just warp time ahead until we're at periapsis you know when we're close I should say you know a couple hundred seconds away stop time acceleration go to retrograde and then once we get in to uh, periapsis just do our braking burn then that would work for, for most people it'd be fine but just to show that you can use transex to get a little bit more uh, information out of that deceleration burn the best time to do it we'll go ahead and set this up here and we're close enough to the Earth that now I think is a good time to set this up. I wouldn't bother setting this up any sooner than, uh, you know, 0 0.90 or something like that. Because we're still 17,000 seconds away. We've, we've, got, we've got a little way to go, so if we did need to make another small adjustment uh, to our periapsis, then we wouldn't want to have this already set up. So I like to, again, I just like to wait until this, until I'm really close to the Earth before I set up this deceleration burn. So over here in Transex, we got maneuver mode, and we'll press plus plus to turn it on. Go through the variables, and the variable for uh, the deceleration burn is going to be prograde velocity. It, obviously, what we're going to do is we're going to break 
uh, you, you, in the retrograde, and you can imagine that that's going to be a reverse orientation. So instead of going plus plus, we're going to go minus minus because we need to slow down. So we're going to press. Uh, actually, I did forget one thing here. Let me. This is very important. I need to, before I figure out what that bur uh, amount of negative prograde velocity is going to be. I need to set the correct time for the burn because we're not going to do the burn now. As soon as I turn maneuver mode on, the date it selects is right now and we're not going to do the burn right now. We're going to do the burn in about 17,000 seconds. So according to Transex, we're going to reach uh, periapsis at uh, this time here, 52011.4766. So that's what I need this number to be. And I don't want to make a course adjustment because that would raise it drastically. So I'm going to come out here to uh, Ultra and I'm going to click uh, plus plus until this number here is exactly the same as this number which is 4766 and I can even go super for this part and now we'll go to uh, ultra and now we'll go to hyper okay now I've got the date uh, I got the correct time set so this is when we're going to do this burn. We're not going to do the burn now. We're going to do the burn at this time, which is about 17,000 seconds from now. Now I can go back through the variables, over to prograde velocity, and continue to add some negative prograde. And this uh, appears to be a guessing game at first because, you know, nothing's happening. I mean, there, we don't have any good information. But what we were want to look at here is this hypothetical... PED. This is the hypothetical periapsis. Currently, the hypothetical is the same as our focus. And let me just kind of switch this over to medium. And as I press and hold minus minus, what you'll see is this hypothetical periapsis will start to go down once I reach uh, a certain point. And so I'm just going to keep, okay, there it is. Now it's changing drastically. So now I know that I've, I've got too much negative prograde velocity, so I'm going to click ADJ and I'm going to start adding some prograde velocity back in. You see this number coming back up. And basically this is the sensitivity point. What I'm looking for is when this number uh, I'll stop. I, I know I have the right amount of negative prograde velocity when this number is not moving quickly, like right here. So I'm going to go to a finer adjustment yet. I'll go to super you know, minus, minus, and I'm at negative 3.125, and I can see this is now changing, maybe add one more click, and, uh, and I know this is the sensitivity point, so this is good, negative 3.129, that's now saying that the uh, periapsis is going to be 6.569, which that's right in there with where I need it to be, so that's the sensitive point and that's what I need to go with. So now I'm going to click BW and I need to uh, begin this burn in 16,000 seconds which is quite a ways in the future so I'm just going to press T to warp time ahead. And I always have to be careful here when I get close to the earth. My computer will sometimes uh, hesitate and it's really easy for me to fly right past the uh, the uh, periapsis if I'm not careful because my computer hesitates for a moment when it's loading textures and stuff. So once I get down to this plan, there it is, it hesitated, wow. That was a big hesitation, okay. So we're 300, uh, or rather we're 183 seconds away from the burn, or 290 seconds away from periapsis. Now, uh, let me just mention here quickly, when we do this burn, we're not actually, I'm, I'm using retrograde at the moment just to orient, but when we do the burn, we're not actually going to be in the retrograde position. We're just, I'm just using that for now to keep myself oriented. But once I get close into the time to the burn, which is coming up here, and we'll go with that, I'm going to turn retrograde off, make sure I have rotation thrusters on, and you can see this green X is a little bit off. And in order to get this burn uh, nice and accurate, 
I'm actually going to want to rotate slightly left and get that green X lined up. And as I do the burn, the ship will yaw and it will eventually be lined up perfectly with that bullseye and then it will continue to rotate. And this is just a more accurate way to, uh, to do this uh, retrograde burn because we're moving through space as we do the burn. So if we, continue, if we keep the bullseye, if we keep retrograde on the whole time, then it's just, it's gonna, it's just not as accurate. Let me just go with that. So it's more accurate to do this by having the green X lined up. And you'll notice too that we did gain a little bit of uh, altitude here according to our periapsis. It's gone up to uh, just by, you know, half a kilometer. So it wasn't much at all from 0 0.93 out to where we are now. But all right, now I gotta watch what I'm saying because I'm coming up on the burn. Seven seconds, six, five, and burning. And this is a good long burn. We've got a three thousand, you know, worth of delta V to bleed off. You notice our orbital speed is uh, coming down, and you'll notice our apoapsis is rapidly decreasing. So, uh, but we do want to kind of pay attention to this green X. It will need some uh, ref refinement a couple of times, but we don't need to worry about it at the moment. If I wanted to, I could even press T to accelerate through this burn a little bit, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I'll botch it. And I've come all this way. I don't want to mess it up now. I'll go ahead and press Control 3 to line that uh, X up a little bit more. Watching the uh, apoapsis there. It's coming down. Orbital speed coming down. Control 3, line that X up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to really pay attention to this apoapsis. If, if for some reason TransX tells me that I need to burn more or less, but the apoapsis is, uh, and the eccentricity, that I'm, I'm basing this burn decision more on this than I am this. But this should be close. But, you know, sometimes I'll notice that um, I'm, I have a perfectly circular orbit and TransX tells me that it still wants me to burn a little bit more. That just means that I didn't set it up quite right. So if you get your orbit perfectly circular and you notice you still have some more burn to go, then just don't do it. Just turn off the engines because this is accurate at this point. Control 1 to line that X up a little bit. because the periapsis was really starting to come down 
and if I let it get too far, even though, you know, TransX says I've still got a little more delta V to go, and my orbit's not perfectly circular, but if I let this get too low, then I'll actually have some atmospheric drag, and I don't want that. Matter of fact, I let this get a little bit lower than I should. I really shouldn't have let it get much lower than about 190. But this is good. So now I can press uh, VW over here to get over to the view maneuver. Go through the variables and turn maneuver mode off. We are done with TransX. And we are basically done uh, basically done with this video. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Getting from the moon back to the Earth using TransX and nothing but TransX. And here we are, home sweet home. And of course, all the normal things that you would normally do for orbit now should be you know within your grasp. Uh, if I get over here to the periapsis proper, I can actually do a little bit of a retrograde burn to lower my apoapsis if I want. And then when I, if I want to warp time ahead to the apoapsis, then I could obviously go to the prograde position, do a little bit of a burn to bring up the periapsis. You know, all just the normal orbital stuff. So that is it. I hope you uh, got something of value out of this video.